Our first guest tonight is an Emmy, a Tony, and Golden Globe winning actor you know from shows like Cheers and Frasier. He stars in the film Light Father, which is streaming on Netflix. Let's take a look. How'd you guys meet? Yeah, what's Where'd your story? How'd you catch the silver fox? Ooh. Hi. I'm Harry, actually. Rachel's dad. Rachel and Owen decided not to get married, so she invited me to come. You see, I left her when she was five years old. It's unforgivable, I know. So I showed up at their wedding a few days ago, and that's when Owen decided to be a little bitch and leave Rachel at the altar. So I took Rachel out and got her good and drunk, and uh, we're here. Please welcome back to the show, Kelsey Grammer, everyone. Thank you, sir. I'm so happy to have you here. I want to say this, and I mean this genuinely. I've been doing this show for a while now. I've never, there's never been a better clip to explain the movie than that's the clip we just showed. It. That's, yeah. that's the movie. Not only was it really funny, uh, but it let you know who the actors were, yep. and you, your character basically explained the plot. Exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. And the movie is very, very heartwarming and, uh, and heartfelt, and very emotional in places. There's a kind of an undercurrent story about Alzheimer's in it, which is. Not particularly funny, of course, but it gives it a kind of gravitas and, uh, and an emotional foundation that's actually, it's a great movie. Uh, it's really fun. I know a ton of people are watching it already, which is... Uh, it's a big hit, apparently. That's yeah. very exciting. And uh, you actually, so you shot on a cruise ship. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Seth Rogen here this week talking about that, but I didn't realize there was a hurricane in the lead-up to getting onto right. the ship. Right, Hurricane Irma was sort of playing uh, a tag with us the whole time. And so the first week of the cruise was cut in half because the, the, the ship wouldn't leave the dock for that time. Oh, no, it had to go out into the middle of the sea and, and uh, dodge the hurricane. I see. So that's without, probably safer than, right. Apparently it is. You know, hurricanes are not such a big deal at sea. Right. They're more of a, a, tr a problem when they hit. Right. You don't, as a giant yeah. boat, you don't want to be right next to land. You sure don't. Yeah. Because then it ends up on the land. Right, yeah. Right, that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Tilted. Um, but uh, it, it, was a, it was a fun experience. I've always uh, lived on boats myself. I, I, I grew up on boats. I used to own a boat. Uh, it's, it's one of the great passions of my life. So what, when, the, I always am uh, curious when people own boats. What was uh, the name of your boat? Oh, this, is, uh, this has been the subject of some ridicule in, in oh. the past. But, well, I apologize uh, in advance for uh, asking. It's, it's yeah. OK. <laughs> um, my, uh, my boat, my first boat that I actually bought myself, I didn't buy it until I was about 30 two years old. It had been my dream ever since I was a, a young man. And I finally got enough money to buy this sailboat, a 37-foot Baltic sloop. And I could single hand it. And I, I practically lived on it for a few years. But in order to remind myself that I shouldn't take myself too seriously, it was called the Bioya K, which is um, an acronym for blow it out your ass, Kels. Oh. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I think it's really nice. Cause I feel like a lot of other people, when they get their boats, they name it the other direction. They like the winner. Well, or... <laughs> no, no, I think that's pretentious and yeah. horrible. Well, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, and no. do you still have the Bioya K? Uh, no, I had to sell it. Now, this is a kind of a remarkable situation. I had just fallen in love with Kate, who is my wife now, and we have three children, and we've been married for almost eight years. Uh, but I also spoke to her when we first met. We lived in New York. I was doing a play on Broadway, and uh, we spent most of our time here. The first opportunity we had to go to California, I said, i got to get you on the boat. You have to come down to the boat, and you're going to love it. So I took her to the boat, <laughs> and she boarded the boat. She's standing in the cockpit. I threw open the hatch, went down the ladder, and I'm looking inside down below decks, and behind me comes this voice that says, have you ever had sex on this boat? So I spent about probably what felt like an eternity, was probably 30 seconds, trying to run through every scenario that would be convincing that I hadn't had sex on a boat I'd owned for 25 years. <laughs> so I thought, oh, I'm just going to have to tell her. Sorry. <laughs> and I turned around and I said, yes. <laughs> and she said, well, then I'm not going out on it. Wow! <laughs> she drew the line. Absolutely. So, so you had to sell uh, the boat. I sold the boat. I Did actually, you get? I actually donated the boat. You donated to it. Charity. Oh right. Oh. <laughs>
But I thought what she was saying was fair. She said I could get another boat if I wanted to. Yeah. But, you know. When you donated it to the charity, did you let them know how much sex you'd had on it? Uh, <laughs> I did not. <laughs> you I, did I, not. I gave yeah. it a good cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> no. So uh, I want to ask you, because you actually shot this on a, a functional cruise ship while there were passengers. It's the largest ship in the world. Yeah. And because I'd, I'd run boats all my life, when I met the captain of the ship, because it's called a ship. It's you know it's the largest thing that moves made by man. It's a it's an extraordinary vessel, and uh, he is this captain maybe the out of a hundred guys in the world qualified to to do this job. Sure, he is the the king of it. He sits at the pinnacle of his trade, and I thought that is a, a truly admirable admirable quality. And he's a he's a terrific guy, and he looks after seven thousand souls on every trip. Uh, it, it's an extraordinary thing. Did you thing. get to go into? Uh, I, I apologize. Is it a cockpit? What do you call where he? Oh no, the I never bridge? the wheelhouse. No, I never the, the bridge. Okay. I, I, I never went there. But uh, I did go below. I went below decks a few times to uh, the kitchen, uh -huh. which is as big as Thirty Rock, practically. I can imagine. I mean, it's yeah. just unbelievable. They, they serve something like twenty-two thousand buns every morning. That's a lot of uh, buns. It, it's just. It, it, they, it's uh, just it, well, the last you know, time there were that many buns you got, on your old boat. Exactly. Yeah. About, <laughs> Just down on the old Bioya K. <laughs> you, uh, you also, you shot inside a waterfall. You have a scene inside a waterfall. Well, it's like a, it's like a big, uh, it's a, it's a, a waterfall in Jamaica. Getting to it was somewhat treacherous, and it's funny. I'm, I'm shooting a film right now uh, where there was some water stuff we did as well, and the same guy was my stunt double on the film I'm doing now, and so I asked him. I said, "How dangerous was that jump?" Because they wouldn't let me do it. I said, oh, well, I'll give it a shot. And he said, I almost killed myself. Oh, wow. So I thought, okay, that's, that's good. <laughs> um, it's better you almost killed yourself than me. <laughs> but um, I did have other scenes I had to shoot, and he wouldn't have. So if, if we'd lost him, it would have been a noble, noble burial. <laughs>